Hi everybody, welcome to Gumbo TV. Hey guys. Sponsored by Hobbit in Japan. We're back after a uh, holiday short week last week. Which was very nice. Yes, so we got an episode for you, don't worry. We're yes, do we do. We're something a little bit different. Yep. Uh, we're doing a Q&A episode. That we are. So last episode we asked, if you have any questions you want to ask Sid or Ryan? And nine pages. Nine pages of questions. We won't, ask, we won't be able to answer them all though. Yeah, yeah. we highlighted the good ones. Yep. So we'll answer those. And uh, last week I mentioned there's a holiday. We actually received our Gundam a day early. Yeah. So I have a new Gundam I want to show before we get to the questions. Of course. All right? Yep. All right. So first one, my shot, my shot, my shot. It's the uh, double Gundam, the Seven Sword G. Seven Sword slash G. Now this is basically the kit that we had a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, you built a kit. Yeah, I built this with one. LEDs. The o riser mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this one has the Seven Swords. So you're not getting the o riser This manual's thick. You're actually getting a lot of uh, extra runners just for the sword parts, yeah. clear effects parts, and whatnot. And uh, one thing I would like to mention to everybody here is uh, if you've built the uh, other O riser, it came with an LED, but this one does not come with an LED. Oh, it doesn't. It's, it doesn't. It's a thousand yen cheaper, but it does not oh, come with the LED. Okay. However, I guess Bandai got tired of trying to fill all the orders yep. that were submitting for those LEDs after the first O-Riser came out. Yeah. So what they did is they decided that they're just going to sell it on their own. LEDs finally. LEDs finally. Thank you, Bandai. You've yeah. heard the prayers of all the consumers <laughs> out there around the world who cannot access Bandai Japan's site. Yep. And uh, what they've done is they've put two LEDs in this box. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it retails for 1100 yen. So. I think from this kit, the one previously, there were actually multiple... There were five... Yeah. LEDs that could be used in the previous but you only got but two. you only got one you only got one so okay. people were sending away for sets of four sets of two cool so here's sets of two so Finally. if you have the other old riser and you haven't yet got the LED parts for it this is what you want you can go crazy yes you can go crazy and speaking of Bandai Gundam craziness well here's the, the first kit in the Gundam mm -hmm. age it's mm -hmm. the new anime that yep. starts October 9th I think October 10th popular kits it's already uh, so really far. popular people yeah. are looking forward to it all the kitties are excited to get their card games or whatever else oh there's card games <laughs> so uh, this kit comes out at the end of this month yeah. to kind of build up the hype for the anime release mm -hmm. and next month we'll see the rest of the age one kits okay and uh, the upcoming uh, Plama Homa show which yes. is I think in three weeks time yes I suspect we will see a lot of Gun and oh, stuff. There. Okay, that'd be that'll, cool. That'll, that'll be of interest. Pimping yeah. for the next few months until the year, into the year runs out. Sweet. And uh, we will actually show you this a bit more in depth on the next episode of Come Through. Awesome, Sid. So now these are out of the way. And now it's question time. We're going to turn it over to Ryan. Okay, Ryan, you're going to be the MC for this episode. MC Ryan. MC Ryan in the house. Yep. Please stay. <laughs> and uh, Ryan, you printed out the questions. I have. Let's just go through them in order. Okay, we won't be going through all of them, though. I know. Just, we have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Answer the ones that we feel are most important. Yes. So we'll start with Phil Chow. Okay. How did you guys get your job at Hobby Link Japan? And how is it living in Japan compared to Western countries? Okay, yeah. I'll go first. You go first. How did I get my job at Hobby Link Japan? Well, I was teaching English, of course. And one day I decided I don't want to teach English anymore. So I went onto a website that's called uh, gaijinpot.com. Uh -huh. that's Very famous. The pre I think the famous. Site for job listings. Yeah in Japan. You have to wade through all the English teaching jobs. But uh, there was one in there for a hobby, uh, hobby business, an yeah. online seller. And I actually had a link to hlday.com. So I went there and there was a banner at the top saying, do you want to work for a hobby in Japan? So I submitted my resume and I faxed it and I called and yeah, went in for an interview Begged. and I prayed and I burned incense at the altar <laughs> and, and uh, a couple weeks later I got the call and here I am. So it pays to pray. <laughs> Of course. It doesn't, hurt. it doesn't hurt you. How long have you been at HLJ actually? Uh, that would be three years mm -hmm. in January. What about you, Ryan? How did you get your job here? Um, I'm kind of fresh in Japan. I think I'm just over a year and a half. I came to Japan from Australia. I didn't have a job. I was looking for a job. I saw this job in advertising and marketing, which I'd done in Australia. Applied for it, for it, prayed a lot, and got it. And here I am today. Okay, second part of this question. How is it living in Japan compared to Western countries? Mm. It's a tough one. Uh, I can be perfectly honest here and I say it's, it can, it's actually not terribly difficult. No. I, I mean, there's, a, there's the side of Japanese culture that I will never understand. And mm. each time something will come up and I'll scratch my head and I'll say, what, what? But on the flip side is that is because I'm not Japanese, 
that I don't have to put up with all of that weird Yeah, craziness. you get like a pass jail get, free ticket or something. You get a free pass and yeah. for a lot of things. And of course, there's a lot of people out there who want to learn to speak English, want to help you. So there, people are offering you assistance quite often if you need it. Yeah. And, you know, I came here, I didn't speak a lick of Japanese. Have you been here? Six, seven mm -hmm. years, seven years in January. I don't know. So you've had a lot of experience. Yeah, so I, there's always been someone to help yeah. me. And, and because of Japanese, the way that they run, everything's always the same. Yeah. So if you learn one aspect of it and you can do that yourself, you'll be able to do all these other things as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? Well, actually, I have to say something. I came to Japan when I was getting married. My wife is Japanese, so she, of course, helps me a lot. I haven't been here that long, but the first year was pretty difficult, just yeah. getting used to a very different culture. But Japan is pretty cool for shopping and stuff, and people are really friendly, yeah. and the food is excellent. And uh, it's hard to compare because they can be really different. Mm -hmm. But uh, so far, it's been good. Yeah, it's like it's pluses and minuses. It's oh, uh, yeah, of so. Course. It's different from Western countries, though. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's really different. There's that that side of Japanese culture, which is there, which most people see, yeah. you know, anime, manga, toys, figures, and then there's the flip side of it, which not many people see. But I don't, I can't go into detail too much. But there's a lot of strange stuff going on. There. <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> and I think the earthquake and like it's yeah. been it's it's very different. I think very different from anywhere. Because I, I lived in Malaysia before. I've lived mm -hmm. in. Singapore, I'm from South Africa, and also having lived in Australia, like it's very much its own place. And I'd recommend to anyone to come here because yeah. it's really like nothing you've experienced before. Yeah. Next. Sure, let's move on. Okay. This is from uh, Chris Ovando. Also, will there be any new PG kids coming soon? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the last few winters we've seen the Strike Freedom and the O Rise, Double O Riser, and the uh, Red Frame before that. But this year there has been no indication that there is going to be a perfect grade. No, uh -huh. And usually the hobby magazines will have it a few months in advance, they'll have the shots. Uh, I'm leaning towards just answering no on this one, possibly because the yen is so high and the strike freedom didn't sell as well as mm. Bandai probably yeah. anticipated it would. However, I think the definitive answer will be at the hobby show on yeah, October sure. the 14th or whatever. That's their hobby show, that's where they had the strike freedom out in all its glory last year and we showed it to you. If there is something at that hobby show, then you can you can expect it will be out. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be. I think the big thing this winter will be the Master Grade Unicorn mm. with the full armor. I think that's what's going to be pushed this winter. Okay. And PG we might wait another year. Sweet. But what do I have? Okay, so this is a similar question. What brought you guys? Did you? It says, what kind of academic focus did you have before you started at HLJ, or probably just in general, maybe? Okay. Well, you go ahead. You answer first. Um. Well, I did a degree in advertising and marketing it's, uh, and a bit of design. I did that in Oz and I came here and I'm doing that now. So, My academic focus, well, <laughs> I, I didn't attend any university. I was doing uh, trade education in high school. I learned welding, drafting, architecture, uh, and that the plan was to go from there. And uh, oddly enough for me, to gr I focused on that kind of curriculum early on in high school and by my grade 12 year, my last year of high school, I had enough credits to graduate uh, six months ahead of time. Oh, All I needed was English. So what I decided <laughs> to do is, I'm out of here. <laughs> I left school, took English by correspondence. I, I graduated six months ahead of time, but because I found myself outside of that group where all my friends were, yeah. that you know I had nothing to do, I got a job. <laughs> so sense. I just started working and uh, from there, you know, I just kept working where I was at and eventually moved up the ladder at the company I was working at. So I didn't see a reason to go back to school. Because you had like wholesale experience oh, before. Yeah, I, I so used to yeah. manage warehouses uh -huh. and things like that. So that's how you... I mean, however, let me just say here right in front of the camera, get an education. Get an education. Get an education. Especially if you want to come to Japan. You yeah. Need a, it's, you need it's, a degree of some kind, yeah. usually just to get your visa to stay here. Yeah. Or get married to yeah. Or play the marriage game. <laughs> Which I didn't do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, this is from um, Trevor Lai. How many Gundams do you have, Sid? Uh, I can't count them. Yeah, you got I've a, you got, he's got millions. Mm, no, I've got yeah. lots. Sid has also donated heaps to our like, 
What is it? The display case? So you must downstairs, have a stack. Yeah. yeah, and you had a million on your I desk. I had a whole bunch on yeah. my desk until the earthquake. Yeah, which took them all out. <laughs> I just put them back in a box, took them home. I can't be bothered to put them back up again after <laughs> that. Like, they're going to fall again. I have three Gundams, if anyone's interested. My first kit I ever built was a Gundam. Yeah? Yeah. I think there's a question related to that after. Yes, second. there is. Um, okay, this is from Gerardo Mares. Okay. What can we do to get a Gumpla produced? I'd love to have an, an MG or modern HG or the Gebera. Gebera? Gebera Tetra or Gebera Custom? Uh, short answer is nothing. <laughs> yeah. Bandai is really protective of its stuff. Yeah. And all stuff is in house for the most part. Yeah, I think it's all made in Japan as well. Isn't yeah, it? it's all made yeah. in Japan. Uh, occasionally they will have a survey online saying what would you like to see next? Yeah. But generally they put up that survey already knowing what these results are going to be. So they've already prepped, they've already done the prototypes of usually what they expect to be the top. Well, a lot of like the top modelers here actually kind of sculpt their own. Yeah, there's so much scrap building yeah. going, a scratch building going on yeah. so. in Gunpla now that uh, Bandai is probably not being, feeling the pressure to get different kits out. No. They're just going, you know, there's the, let's focus on this anime and get these kits out or let's focus on a variation of this kit we've already had and get that out of them. So you'll see new stuff, but I don't think they really pay attention to the consumer so much because they know people are going to buy it anyway. Yep, absolutely. Especially with new shows coming. Yeah. Juno Uno, will you guys be holding a gum? We'll keep that question for the end. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Joe's Gumpla for Sid and Ryan both. What are some of your favorite TV shows and or anime? Uh, favorite TV show for me has to be Family Guy. Futurama. Futurama is good too. Um, um, I like Japanese anime. I'm kind of a bit old school in that I like Ghost in the Shell and yeah, Akira. Akira. The Sometimes. Studio Ghibli, Ghibli stuff is awesome. Yeah, I, I've really gone back to the Studio Ghibli yeah. stuff. Now that I have a daughter, I'm watching with her. It's always like high quality. It's really well done, the more you pay attention to. And uh, there's so much anime and manga in your face in this country that it's really difficult for you to actually focus on. It gets one, confusing. I, it it's does like, get it's confusing. just like, I don't know how many of you guys know, but the selection yeah. of that stuff here is insane. Yeah. And we get these kind of questions a lot from Japanese people when I meet, when I meet someone and they find out where I work. It's like, what's your favorite anime? Well, do you know this one and this one, this one, this one? Well, now that I work here, I've heard one of all piece, these things. Naruto. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of all these things. But I just don't have the time to focus yeah. on all these different, all these different animes. There's a, a manga called uh, Tough, okay, which uh, I enjoy reading, and I don't think they have any products related to that. It's all about this guy fighting different martial arts masters and stuff like that. That's probably the only manga I spend any time reading. Yeah, I don't read but, manga. Uh, Studio Ghibli, Spirited Away. By far the highest quality yeah. I think and strong stories yeah. okay what do we got next um, Pablo Sanchez guys what do you usually do on weekends beside building gumplas well I don't build that much gumpla that's it uh, my weekend usually consists of Saturday morning going out to the dojo yep and Saturday afternoon trying to take a Japanese lesson by the time and then Sunday I just relax mm. and usually I do not build gumplas Unless it's, I really need to get something done. Sunday is kind of my off day. Like, I, I pretty much go to Tokyo or my wife's parents' place pretty often. I do enjoy PC gaming, so if there's a good game yeah, out, I'll be doing that. I spend a lot of time on the uh, Black Ops. <laughs> <laughs> Way time. too much time. Okay. Kimono Taku. Hi guys, this is a simple question for the every person that work on Gunpla TV. Which kit was your favorite first build? Favorite first build or mm. just first build? Favorite first build, that's a good question actually. Uh, well, I guess the first Gundam kit I ever built was yeah. the Master Age Shinmusha Gundam. Yeah. And I was I just started working here and I'd be going to the warehouse, what's this, what's that? You know, what's this Gundam thing? Like, we have <laughs> shells in there. So I decided to pick one up and I chose the Shinmusha Gundam because yeah. it comes with these weapons. So I think I built him in about two days and the whole time I'm like, oh, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool. So that was it, like right from there, mm. booked. I built a few Gundams when I first came to Japan, but probably the most rewarding one was actually that Yamato battleship I built, the spaceship yeah. Yamato. Just with adding that extra detail to the kit, that was probably my favorite yeah. experience. Okay, Patrick Spaulding. 
I have two questions, one for Sid and one for Ryan. To Sid, how do you feel when you do your hobbies? Also, what's something you frequently do while building kits or painting them? Okay, so how do I feel when I'm doing my hobbies? Can do? Uh, obviously, I feel good. Like, yeah, no, that's the most part. Is, that's why you do a hobby, right? <laughs> you can get away from all this other stuff that you should or could be doing. It's an escape in some regards, right? Uh, that said, I'm not like giggling and smiling, yay! Because now that I, uh, I spend a lot of time building things for Gumpa TV, while I'm actually building them, I, in my head I'm going through the process of what do I need to build, what can I show on Gumpa TV, how far can I go in this mm -hmm. build before it, you know, I've built everything and there's nothing to show. So I spend a lot of time while I'm building thinking about how I'm going to present it. That takes up the majority of my yeah, time. And I'm what, very similar these days to that. And uh, yeah. what I do while I'm doing it is I tend to watch uh, television on my the office. computer. Because I do not watch television. Just, I don't no. sit and watch television. I just no. don't do it. I'm always Anymore. doing something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. While I'm building, I'll have the television going on or, the, or DVD on or something. Yeah. I listen to variety shows. Japanese variety <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the question to me, to Ryan. Yeah. What is it like to live in Japan but not speak Japanese? Is what, it difficult? What's it like, Ryan? Well, strangely enough, I came to Jap Japan with zero Japanese. That's slowly improving. I try study. It is difficult. I think you can get by without Japanese. I don't recommend it. You, you can. You can, you can get by. Foreigners who come to Japan and only learn just enough to get by. Yeah, I and would, that's fine too. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's your life. You're if you're gonna be here longer, then well, I I'm, I study a little bit. But if like if you're gonna stay here for a long time and you're sure you are going to stay here a long time, mm -hmm. I really recommend it. Not only to you, but to me as well. Uh, I find that lots of people who come to Japan, the first thing they get into is teaching English. So they spend all of their working time yeah. teaching English and uh, not using any Japanese at all. So it's oh. really difficult actually to get in that mindset of speaking Japanese all the time because. Your work involves only English. Yeah. yeah. Scott, uh, you know, the boss Scott, like when he came to Japan, he was studying English. He was doing a degree in, I mean, he was studying Japanese. He did a degree in Japanese and he was at home stay for one year with only Japanese. That's probably the quickest way to learn Japanese. He said to me in nine months, yeah. he was getting it together and like, yeah, if you're going to do it, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Next question. Colin Becker. My question is this, as someone who is going to be spending 14 days in Japan this November, what would you consider to be the must-see locals slash events in Japan? Well, it depends on where you stay. Well, if you like take Akihabara. Yeah, if, you, if you're in Tokyo and you're watching this television show, chances are you'll be going to Akihabara. Oh, yeah. Or Asakusa. Yodobashi the tourist camera. Park. Yeah, Yodobashi, Yodobashi camera in Asakusa. Or in Akihabara is all you really need to go yeah. to. Yeah. The place is enormous. And the amount of kits, like just yeah. Gundam, yeah. Oh. they're like our warehouse, <laughs> but bigger. It's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> impressive. But uh, if you want to get the, the Japanese feel of it, like uh, you're gonna need to go to a temple. Kyoto. Yeah, I like Kyoto. Kyoto is probably the way to go. Yeah. Go to uh, Kinkakuji, the Golden Pavilion, Kiyomaru, the uh, temple there. Like, Kyoto is Japan. Yeah, yeah, very like. If you go to if you go to Tokyo, you're in modern Japan. You, yep. you get all the good gadgets and cool stuff. You have to actually get outside of Tokyo and Nikko and uh, Kumagaya, or, or not Kumagaya. There are two things I might recommend. Is the fish markets. Skiji. Yeah, like if you enjoy sushi and stuff, the best sushi I ever had was there. Tokyo Tower, I went up there like at dusk. So you get the, the light and the night. Super okay, place for photography. Now. You gotta go to the sky tree. You have to wait. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you go to uh, Shinjuku, they have the office buildings. You can go oh, up on yeah, 40, yeah. whatever. There's like stuff. a free government building yeah, you can go it's, it's higher than the Tokyo Tower. You actually go to the top, see the skyline. You can see Mount Fuji on a clear day. Yokohama Bay Area. Yeah, it's very nice. Sweet. Lots to do. So yeah. it's all good. Like Japan as a tourist is super. Excellent yeah. food, great accommodation, yeah. reasonably priced. Everything's very obliging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. helpful. And uh, if you push Japanese people, they can speak a bit of English, mm -hmm. for sure. Next. Next. Okay, will Bandai release MG or PG? Kshatriya. Kshatriya. Answer no. That one's easy. Uh, the Kshatriya is so big that to hold those massive uh, 
binders and final things like they are going to have to come up with something that either involves a whole different type of design so they can use plastic to keep it lightweight mm -hmm. or they're going to have to use metal yep. and i think they actually built prototypes of it and just realized that this thing's going to be so expensive nobody's going to want to buy it at that price we just can't do it yet sweet yeah. you want to answer, ask me this one sure i'll ask you a question ryan it says i want to know what happened to scott's bill to tell me a toyota LFA. It's not a Toyota. It's a Lexus, but that's the same thing. What happened to that, Ryan? Producer well, of Hobby Link Japan? this well, by the time this episode airs, maybe two days later, Scott's uh, LFA video will be up. Okay. Um, he has done part of the car. It looks really good. Yeah. So, watch it. He's the boss man. I mean, he gets and he's busy. He's busy. He's very boss busy. Man, so yeah, he's yeah, a little yeah, ride. Yeah. ride. We'd like you to have him yeah. actually. It's a flyer. Yeah. Okay, Joe's Gumpla, Sid. If you only had one last chance to build one more model, which model would you want to complete the most? Yeah, you know, this is a tough question. Like, I'm spoiled when it comes to Gunpla. I live in Japan. I can go and I can pick up all the Gente limited edition kits and walk into the warehouse and see any Gundam I want to see at any time. Like, there's no real yearning for one because they're all around me. If I could, if you would say you're never going to build another kit again, you have to choose one. Oh man, what did I do? Can I, why are you thinking? There's one kid I really want to build. Okay. You know that film District 9, those mechs? Yeah. I wish Bandai would freaking build those. They just need uh, the rights. Yeah, <laughs> that's a problem. It's all about the rights. I'm yeah. sure it's, some people have looked into it. Well, you can the order them. I think Scott has like a really expensive cast yeah. iron stainless steel kit, which is phenomenal. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to pass on this uh, gun in question because okay. I don't know. I don't know. So what happens when you have too much choice? Mm -hmm. You can't uh, choose anything. No. Studies have shown if you offer somebody too many choices, they're unable to make a decision. Yep. Okay, what kids do you think have the best flexible inner frames? Uh, the Rio Grade, of course. They come Other than me or you? Aha! <laughs> you don't have a flexible inner frame. You admitted that on camera. <laughs> that is uh, true. The Rio Grades, of course, come pre-molded with the frame that will bend. However, you have to be really careful with it because it, the parts are so small and thin. I think uh, for the most part, any perfect grade or master grade has a great range of articulation. Mm -hmm. It's just once you start slapping the armor on there, it's, it, it inhibits its range of motion. I think basically the newer kits, especially, they're almost all the same yeah. when it comes to that kind of flexible frame. Cool. So just choose one with a lean amount of armor. Sweet. Yes, yeah. Okay, this is from Feelin Kipper. Feelin Kipper. What future kits are you guys most looking forward to? Mm, that's a good question. We have the uh, Real Grade Freedom coming out. Yep. But to be honest, I'm not too excited about that one. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the, I, we've seen pictures now in the Hobby Magazine, the Master Grade Unicorn, which uh, full armor, because of the big booster tanks in the back. And uh, there's some talk about maybe it's actually a completely new unicorn kit because maybe it won't transform because it's going to have to hold all that stuff. So I'm interested in seeing that one. But uh, what I'm probably most interested in is just waiting to hear news of a new perfect grade kit. Mm -hmm. So give me, give me news. I want to hear it. Like, what's it going to be? Please, not a strike variation. <laughs> give me news. <laughs> there's two kits I'm interested in. They're all from Fujimi. One is the new Enterprise D that's coming. And also they're releasing some, I think, f sorry, not... Fine Molds. Fine Molds is releasing the Slave 1 yeah. some new mm -hmm. kids, so I'm really interested in those. Okie dokie. Okay. Sid. Yeah. Optimus Prime versus Gundam in a straight up punch up. Who would win? Uh, which Gundam are we talking about? <laughs> which one? Which suit? Well, just... I think uh, Optimus Prime, I think he'd lose. Yeah, there, totally. Because if you watch the latest Transformer movie, Totally getting his butt handed to him. Every, every film. And then Megatron comes in there and yeah. stabs his butt in the back and Prime gets a fly. Prime gets off. Like, you're dead, Prime. You're going to die right there. I'm going to watch you die. But he gets... He's Gundam gone. would... Like, there's not even a contest. Like, the amount of weaponry on a Gundam. Yeah. They'll just go into their whatever Trans Am slash whatever yeah. version mode. And... Sorry, Prime. We love you. But, uh... Yeah, you should also... Is that it for questions? You have to ask okay, Ryan, there's one last question I'm going to ask for you. That's going to set the stage for some stuff here. <coughs> Ryan. This is from Juno Uno. Hello, Juno Uno. Juno Uno. Will you guys be holding a Gunpla modeling competition sometime in the future? That's a very good question, Juno Uno. And um, we are planning something. 
in the future. In the Some, very near future. Something very big, very exciting. Mm -hmm. So uh, just uh, keep your eyes and ears yes. open. You cannot give out any details until the official announcement. Yeah, well, we've got to get it all set up. But yeah. Yep. But yeah, that's all the questions. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. If, if there's anything we yeah. missed or if you want to ask us any extra questions on Facebook, feel free to go ahead. Maybe we'll do another, another Q&A episode. Yeah. If not, we can just answer them during the episode yeah, on yeah. Facebook itself. Yeah, any questions, just feel free yeah. to ask us. We love your feedback. So. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, next week, we'll be back with kits and the models. We will. All right. See you guys. See you later.